Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. We are standing on one of our farms that is all soybeans. And we have our DJI T50 from AgriSpray right behind me. So I just got the drone all set up. We are all ready to fly. Uh, behind the scenes, I've been doing some test flights, uh, just getting adjusted to the drone, learning about it so that I can start sharing with you guys um, the ropes to drone flying. And uh, like I said, I've been doing this for over 10 years. Um, this is the first time I'm flying a sprayer drone, a whole different beast than one of the smaller drones that I'm used to flying. And uh, I got a hold of Agri Spray down in Missouri, and uh, they set us up with this T50 just this summer. And uh, they've handled everything start to finish for me. So. Uh, if you end up buying a sprayer drone of your own, I highly recommend going through AgriSpray, but I also highely recommend going with their FAA regulations package. Uh, so far, this drone has been a delight to use. Um, just practicing, I've got roughly 50 acres on it now, and uh, I haven't had any issues with it. It's been in those 50 acres, which isn't much at all. Um, it's been extremely reliable. Overall, I think I have According to the uh, controller, I've got 50 flights on it. I don't think it's quite that high, um, but who knows with all the tests that they may have done from the factory, it says 50 over 50. So um, I'm about to get set up here at Burton. So as of right now, I do not have a generator that's large enough to power the, uh, to power the batteries. So um, in the meantime, what I've been doing is a lot of spot spraying. So I can spray roughly 15 acres at a crack and that's allowed me to do a lot more spot stuff. So I'm gonna walk down here and show you guys what I found. So I got access to the Tyrannus data. Um, for those of you who don't know, Tyrannus is a company that comes out and crop scouts for, uh, well, we go through Nutrien for it actually. Um, they send Tyrannus out. Uh, you can sign up for different amounts, but we have five to six flights uh, per field per year. And what Tyrannus does and allows you to do is that they come out, they take pictures throughout your farm, and that allows you to, basically it helps you to find areas that could be problematic as you head into the growing season. So it allows you to see the problems uh, arrive sooner. If you have several farms that are several miles apart like we do, uh, what actually happens is that they'll come out, take pictures of this, and then they'll upload it online. But that's not all they do. They actually use artificial intelligence to identify problems that may be going on out in the field. And looking at this data, when I first got access to it, I got, I got into it at like 10 o'clock at night. I was up until quarter to three that morning looking over everything um, to see what areas need attention. And that first night, this is actually one that I found. Um, in the meantime, that was back before I've been able to fly the drone. Um, but we've got everything set up now to where I can start doing this stuff properly. So, um, I was looking at the, the Tyrannus data. It actually didn't see this area and recognize it as weeds because it wasn't directly in where it had taken a photo. Um, like I said, they just kind of take spot checks here throughout the field and uh, it's done several times a season. I was looking at those images and I noticed that there's a whole swath here. Uh, about three acres that looks like it didn't get sprayed. So this corner actually comes to a V. I don't know the reason why this didn't get hit with the sprayer. They could have ran out of spray, didn't resume right back to where they should have. Um, but it's a problem area. And right now this is perfect for the drone because I'm still getting used to it. As long as I maintain good distance from the tree line, this is a breeze. So like I said, I, I can do roughly 15 acres at a crack. I mentioned earlier that Tyrannus uses artificial intelligence to look at your fields. Several of the things that they look at uh, are uh, stand counts earlier on in the year. Uh, they look at insect pressure, disease, weeds, and they also, also look at nutritional deficiencies. So when I'm out here scouting, what I'm looking for is any kind of damage in our beans in the past we've had issues with japanese beetles and just walking through here i've seen a couple um, there's certain thresholds that you want to pay attention to to decide whether or not you want to throw anything else in with the mix 
Uh, before you fly is a great time to scout because that's the time when you can decide if you want to throw anything else in with it. So um, walking through this, I am seeing quite a bit of Japanese beetle damage. I see them sitting on the leaves in a couple spots. But otherwise, I mean, the beans on this farm look really, really good. And uh, I think that I shouldn't have to fly this again, uh, or at least everything from here up. There's a lot of volunteer corn going on, but that's going to require a different product. So. As far as I can tell, this is all that's going to get spray, spot sprayed. So um, I'm, I'll mix a load up. What I have sectioned out with the drone is this entire piece, but I might be able to split it in half. And uh, this will take a full uh, drone full from what I have mapped out. It's actually this entire strip on this side plus a little bit on the other side of the waterway but uh that way i can save some spray save some battery and scout a little bit for other spots that i might want to spray uh, like along the woods on the other side of this ravine we're going to go back up to the truck i've got the drone out i've got it unfolded we only need to load it up with spray i've got everything all mapped out i might need to adjust to it a little bit but we're gonna go ahead and spray this and hopefully I can come back in about two weeks and show you guys if it died off, which I hope it did. So, wow, that is the tallest soybean I have ever seen. The beans that are here are competing with the weeds for sunlight. But otherwise, I mean, honestly, they're lacking foliage, but they do have pods on them. Not very many. Not very big either. Since this is my first legitimate use with the drone, I'm not gonna do any action shots or take the other drone out or anything. Uh, I'm focusing solely on spraying, but I'll share a uh, little bit more about the drone as we get it ready. Um, or I'm not gonna talk too much about the chemicals either until I get a little bit more experience with them. Um, pretty much though, when it comes to uh, using chemicals, follow the label because that's the law. And uh, the label pretty much tells you everything that you need to know about using them. This isn't all that new because I've got my private pe uh, pesticide applicator's license, but uh, I, this is the first time where I've sprayed our own crops with anything before. Otherwise, it's all been out in the pasture. <laughs> so let's go ahead and fill this half up with water. We'll throw our Roundup in and I'll get ready to fly. scary but effective so everything that's green there is stuff that i sprayed that's three and a half acres we did that on one battery and we didn't even spray out an entire tank full because of all the turning we had to do if this was a more regular field even like that piece 
we would have been able to empty the spray tank without using all the battery. But I had a hiccup when I first started with picking the wrong field. I had this selected multiple times. That's why you can see multiple numbers overlaid right there. Um, I chose the wrong one, so I had to go back and fix that after I took the aircraft off, which is why I didn't uh, still have juice left in the battery. But I'm going to spray this other piece now with what's left in the tank. And just like that, we're packing up and getting ready to leave. So uh, pretty happy with using it as a spot sprayer uh, in and out really fast. I just am looking forward to getting my generator so that I can do more area instead of just focusing on the areas that need it most. This is good just because it, it hits the spot that needs it the worst. So I'll be back in a couple days, maybe a week or more and see how it pans out i'll let you guys know then but uh for now we're calling her a night i don't know if you can make this out very well but i did throw a little bit of pesticide in and you can actually see where the bugs defoliated about five feet out away from where the grass was if you look at the top of the plants there the top leaves are missing they're stubbish but as you get further away from where the weeds were, it gets a lot better. So when I was up here spraying this, uh, I came to realize that I didn't have the uh, width settings set properly on the drone. And I actually left uh, a little bit of spacing between the passes, which is why it's actually greener right through here i'm standing right where the split is yeah looks like some overspray burned it a little bit but uh over on the right is where the drone flew over and if i had the drone narrowed up a little bit that would have killed this more evenly i didn't realize it until after the fact um, about what the drone settings really should have been i thought i had them set right but i didn't so um that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start out doing small things like this to make sure that everything's set properly before I got into doing any fungicide. And I'm glad I did, because that's one thing that I pointed out. So all the grass is dying and twisted off. This isn't gonna go through the combine all the greatest, but at least it is kind of helping the beans stick through a little bit, as you can see. If you're trying to get a better grasp on what your parameters need to be, Agarspray has a knowledge hub on their website where you can find a number of pattern tests that they've had done. If you go into these tests, you can see on this one in particular, they use a T40, which uses the same rotary atomizer nozzles that my drone has. Uh, in this test, they were aiming for a two gallon per acre uh, rate. They were aiming for a 32 foot swath. You can see their airspeed here release height, wind velocity, crosswind, all that stuff, and then you can see the results down below. So this marked line shows what they were aiming for, and this line shows where the droplets ended up. And on every test, it's different because their parameters all changed. So if you scroll down, this is what it looks like based off the center of the pass. And in this test, it was pretty regular all the way across. If you scroll down, you can see a test where their target swath was 15 feet and their rate was 10 gallons per acre, and that's what the results looked like. So they have a wide number of tests on their website where you can see this stuff to try to get a better grasp on what your parameters need to be. 
whether you're doing fungicide, whether you're doing herbicide, so that you can get the product on exactly how you need it. So three weeks later, uh, all the stuff that I sprayed was completely burned off, and uh, it definitely killed everything that I wanted. Uh, there would have just been a little bit more even kill across the swath if I had my parameters set up a little bit tighter. So it's just something that I need to keep in mind going forward, but overall, it did the job. Now that we actually have the drone, yeah, if I spot something like this earlier on in the year, we can watch for this stuff more. I can address it myself with the drone. That's going to be a huge advantage. So anyway, uh, that's from our first usage of the drone. So uh, be sure to keep you guys updated as I start doing some of our own fungicide here. Be sure to stay tuned for that. But that's pretty much it for this video. Be sure to go down into the link in the description if you guys are interested in getting a quote from Agrispray and uh, you get free training out of the deal. And for us, I think it's going to be a huge help to the farm. So anyway, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And be sure to follow us and give us a like. I'll see you next time.